And joining us now is Claire Lopez, founder and president of Lopez Liberty LLC. Claire, great to see you as always. Uh, as we just heard Owen mention, the United Nations suspended Russia from the UN Human Rights Council, and they did so uh, due to reports of gross and systematic violations and abuses of human rights. I want to get your thoughts on that move. What do you think? Well, uh, even though the uh, removal of Russia from the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council may be thought of perhaps as symbolic, uh, I think it matters. And this is, of course, in the wake of the reports we're seeing of horrific atrocities committed by Russian troops uh, in places like Bucha, uh, outside of the capital of Ukraine, Kiev. Yeah, and another thing I want to touch on, Claire, is also those new sanctions against Russia. Um, I want to get your thoughts on that. And what type of impact do you think it will have, um, if any? Well, you know, even though sanctions may take a while to really have their full effect, uh, I'm looking at a list of some of the new sanctions that are being imposed, and they include things uh, like revoking Russia's most favored nation status, denying uh, Russia uh, borrowing privileges in international financial institutions, um, also taking aim directly at some of the Russian elites and their family members, including reportedly two daughters of the president, Vladimir Putin. So there are more. But the point is that even if these sanctions do take a while to really have an effect, they are having an effect. And the more personal they get, uh, against those uh, elite leadership figures around Vladimir Putin, um, the more the pressure will build uh, for a change of course uh, on the uh, assault in uh, Ukraine. Uh, Claire, but besides sanctions, you know, what else do you think President Biden and his administration should be doing right now? Well, I mean, the one thing that has been sheltered, if you will, from uh, sanctions by both the United States and many of our European allies, is the energy sector. Uh, and this speaks to the great leverage that Russia has obtained uh, over our uh, European allies, including NATO allies, um, by being uh, such a large uh, provider of energy, oil and natural gas, to those countries, uh, and not wanting to, to cut them off with serious ramifications. But the other part of that, is that the United States itself uh, has gone back on our own uh, ability to be energy independent, and more than that, to be able to provide um, and to sell uh, excess energy, oil and natural gas, to our European uh, partners and allies, uh, which would alleviate a great deal of uh, not only domestic oil, gasoline prices, um, but help our allies in Europe as well. That remains to be done. Claire, we have probably about a minute or so left. I want to get your take on this. Yesterday, President Biden said that the war in Ukraine could last a long time. What do you think about that? And is there a way forward without a protracted war? Well, you know, I, I, um, I regret hearing that uh, from, from our leadership here in the United States, because um, many believe that uh, were we to provide Ukraine with all of the weapons, the drones, the missiles, the, uh, the stingers, the javelins, the uh, shore-to-ship missiles like harpoons, and those MiGs that they've requested that Poland was ready to give, that the Ukraine could be successful in pushing the Russian troops out of their sovereign territory uh, much more quickly. Um, so the question remains, why uh, does it at least appear that the Biden administration is dragging its feet on providing uh, enough uh, of those weapons that Ukraine is asking for. Yeah, well, Claire, unfortunately, we have to leave it right there. So much more we could talk about, though. As always, we really appreciate your analysis. Thank you. Thank you.